Amen, amen. We're talking about dominion, how God has commanded this upon us. He said this is the first blessing, the first promise that you will have dominion. You will have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and all everything living and creeping on the earth, okay? So what we've been talking about, and all throughout this year, this being the final event for this year, and uh, we've been talking about dominion, and uh, I was thinking about what I can bring some more, and, and God said, you don't need to bring more, just like he said in the beginning. Why we started talking about just dominion is that we needed to understand this one thing, there's one thing if we can understand, and then we can start practicing and using it in our lives, we can see the fruits. It's not always good to just go out and start learning everything new every day. It's about learning the same thing, using it, and seeing it work in our life. Because that's how fruit comes, okay? So what I was thinking about, and then this is what happened, is that God revealed to me that there's one thing that people need to learn again about dominion and what is the most important thing that I could think about, okay? So let's go into the scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. This scripture, we don't just put it for show. If everyone knows, we bring this scripture up every week. And this is why, because you're going to learn that tonight. So for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. Next. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Next. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Bringing every thought into captivity. Okay. So what we're going to talk about tonight is about mind renewal. See, I can't give you and make you understand something if you're not going to renew your mind. There is no way change is going to come if we're not going to sit down and change our minds. If we're not going to renew our minds, there is no change possible. Even if you try it, no matter how, let's put it this way, we know our spirits are saved. Where our spirits have been transformed, they have been brought, it has been brought to life. That means it was dead in darkness and there was no light and it has been brought to life. So there is no much more life it can be brought to. Okay? It is perfect, absolutely, certainly perfect. There is no blemish in the spirit at all and there is not going to be any blemish in the spirit at all. Once you've been covered by the blood, that is enough. Now if you want to see that revelation live out in our lives, we have the main part, what we call the soul, the mind, that needs to be renewed. To put it this way, what the Bible says, every blessing, every good thing you've been given in Christ, you have been blessed with every spiritual gift in Christ Jesus. That means everything has been blessed and given to you. And that's your spirit. Now it is our, what we call our authority, to bring it out from the spirit and into this reality. And how we do that is through renewing our mind. Renewing our thoughts. And this is the thing that we're going to do. Is we're going to bring every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 to 24. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In order to put off the spirit man, in the, uh, the old man, we need to put something on. We've learned that. We need to put on the spirit of God. We need to put on the mind of Christ. We've been given that. But the truth is, it's hard to put away the old man. It's hard to say, I've changed. It's hard to say, you know what? These habits of mine, they're gone. It's hard to say that, that, you know what, I know this thing is there lingering over me for maybe years, maybe months or whatsoever, and, and, and it's hard to put away. You know what the world says, old habits die hard. And there's some truth in that because the greater we come to renewing our mind, we will learn that it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some sacrifice. It's not going to happen automatically. It's not going to be this automatic transformation. You just think, I'm just going to sit in this chair. I'm just going to think something good, and I've changed. 
No, that's not going to happen. Look at Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. <clears throat> we know this is where transformation has been taught. So what it says here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Let's not go ahead. A living sacrifice. See, most people think when it comes to mind renewal, it's just going to happen automatically. But yet it is here and it is truthfully told that we need to start to understand this is going to take a sacrifice. So that means some things in my life I will have to by what we call by action, by choice, put away. Some things by action and by choice we need to get in. It's not going to happen by itself. It's going to be by our choice and what we want to choose. See, when we call about dominion, we call about authority, then I will need to start choosing to live in that authority. I need to start making choices based on that authority. It's not, it cannot be based on the situation anymore. I cannot speak based on the situation as I used to speak because that's the old man. The ways of that man is corrupt. See, I can come here every day and, and I can listen to every message and yet I can go home and say the same way, start thinking the same way, keep on doing the same things and all I will get is the same results. No change without mind change. There is no change without ruining your mind. You know what, what? So many times we call up here and we say, you know what? Read the Bible. We say, read the Bible. All your answers are in the Bible. Read the Bible. But how many of us can honestly say that I read the Bible? That I actually go and sit down and read the Bible every day. And it is not just something I do when I find time. But I actually surround my timetable, my schedule around reading the Bible. How many of us can say, you know what? This is my prayer time. Everything else can wait. Or is it the first thing that we change when a situation comes up? What is the most non-negotiable thing in your life? Is it God? Is it the word of God? Is it prayer? Is it believing what he said? Or is it everything else? When the non-negotiables are what God says, then you will start seeing and acting the way God wants you to act. See, Jesus only did what he, heard, this, what he saw the Father do. That was his non-negotiable. You know, that means no matter what anyone said, no matter what the situation determined, no matter who put him down, no matter what anyone was trying to put him, no matter if they would stone him or whatsoever, if I see my Father do it, that's what I will do. That was his non-negotiable. How many times are we going to say, you know what, the Bible says... This is what I'm supposed to do. That's why I do this. It's not because you like it or not. Or you know what? Let's have a good example. You know, the Bible says to love. It's the easiest way to explain this. The Bible says to love. But do I love by the person sitting there? Do I love because that person was good to me? Do I love because, because that thing I remember of how good they've been? The Bible says even thieves do that. What good are you? What good are we if we will only love those who love us? What good are we to only give to those who can give us back? But the truth says, the Bible says, love your enemies. Let's be honest here. How many of us can honestly look at ourselves and say, you know what? I pray more for my enemies than I pray for myself. I pray more for those people around me than I pray for myself. Or is our prayer still, still focused on me? Still focused on my needs, my wants, my desires? Isn't all that just, just this idea of selfish prayer? Why is God answering your prayers? Because he loves you. Isn't that true? If he says, you know what? All my needs are met in Christ Jesus. Can we start believing that? Can we start saying, you know what? This mountain that seems like a need, I'm going to speak to it instead of telling my father that I have this need. Because my father is faithful to his word. And he said he will meet my needs. So I'm going to start believing that he will meet my needs. And I'm going to speak to this mountain that you are a need that I need right now. You're going to move away. See, but what we do, the way we've been always doing, 
traditional ideas of what we've been always learned and this is the way I do. So uh, because when when because if we take out all the needs and if I ask someone to pray here, it's gonna be just a minute. Most of our prayers will just last a minute because we don't know how to pray for others. We don't know how, how to intercede. We don't know how to could actually listen to God. Because all our prayers are just still about ourselves. And that's, that's not the way God wants us to live. That doesn't look like to me a transformed mind. It doesn't look like to me someone who is absolutely bound by the choice of love. The love of God compels me to show compassion. The love of God in me compels me to show mercy. The love of God compels me to show grace to those who don't deserve it. That's all. The love of God in me does that. But do I actually believe the love of God in me? Let's look at another one. Romans chapter 1 verse 28. Look, as we get there. I got this uh, quote down from John Piper and says, you know, we are perfectly useless as Christians if all we do is conform to the world around us. We are perfectly useless as Christians if all we do is to live like the world around us. No Christian has any power living like the world around you. That is absolutely the worst a Christian can be is to live like the world because that just shows there is no difference in Christ. There is no difference because you are a Jesus believer. There is no difference because you believe in the word of God. If we still live and the ideals of our ways, the way we do things are all about the way the world does things. See what the word says, do not be confirmed. That's the first part. If we are to take away our mindsets from this world, otherwise this is what will happen. This is what a Christian will look like otherwise. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting. So the honest question I need to ask from this scripture is that what if God would give over my life to the way my mind is right now? What would it look like? What would my life look like if, I, if God had moved out the grace of God away from me? If he had put away mercy from me and all I was living out was I, what I was thinking. What I was thinking in my mind. What would my life look like? Imagine yourself and think about this. Would it look any good? Would it look any good? If you have the thoughts of God, obviously it's going to look good. But if you do not have the thoughts of God, if your mind is not renewed, then it's going to look like this. Debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Let's look at Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Free from sin. There's a simple way to say it. You are free from the bondage of sin. You are no longer bound by sin. That means Sin is no longer your master. It cannot control you. So the moment you say sin controls me, you are saying sin is my master. But the truth of what God says is that Jesus has set you free from sin. He has set you free. So if you have been set free, now what do you do? Stand fast in this freedom. Do not be entangled again with this yoke of bondage. Why do you want to go back into sin? Why do you, why do you want to think about sin? Why do you want to be, be living your life's decisions based on sin? Or the things of the ideals of old? Why not renew your mind and start thinking like Jesus would? Why not renew your mind and start thinking like Jesus always does? And the truth is, you know why? Because that's going to take effort. And it's going to take daily effort. It's not going to happen overnight. You think your mind is going to be renewed overnight? I can tell you it's not going to be. It's going to be a living sacrifice. It's going to look like sometimes, you know, you know, I know most of you have probably seen this in the movies, how they go. You know how they say, um, um, you know, when, when an addict is taken away from the drugs, you know, all these withdrawal effects and how they look like all crazy and 
things they don't understand, all this, sometimes that's what your life will look like when you go start renewing your mind every day. Sometimes those pleasures that you were always consumed by, suddenly we will feel so craving. You know, when, when, what's the greatest time do you feel when I'm having sweets? Is when you're on a diet from sweets. Isn't that true? Why is that? Because your body is one thing and, and, and everything in your life, in your body is fighting to go back. That's how your mind is. It's fighting to go back to the world's way. Look, look, it's easier to say, oh, yes, it's easier to say with everyone else, yes, oh, it's, it's bad times. It's easier to say with everyone, oh, yes, now you know what, business is hard. Because everyone around you is saying it's just easy to say it and nothing will happen. But when you have to stand in the freedom that you've been given, when you have to say, you know what, I know it may be looking bad for you, but my God is the God who works even in famine. He has told me the way out of famine. He said to me, plant in the famine and I know I will see a harvest. And I'm going to trust his word. Because you know what will happen? Because then people will start thinking and saying one thing, you're crazy. But that's how we need to do it every time. It's not going to happen just because you said it once. You need to go over and over and over. And you know, when, once you start, this is how the challenges are. You know, once you start, first few days, oh, you look good. I'm telling you, you look good. You know you've got the word in. You know what you're fighting for. You know you can say to this, you can say to that. But then come a week. Feel the struggle. So look at the bank account. Look at the situation and say, you know what? But God, God, you're faithful. God, you're faithful. Another week turns, and then you know what? Two weeks, three weeks, a month, 40 days. And then the 41 day, it will feel like everything's broken. But what will we do on the 41st day or the 50th day or the 100th day? What will you do one, one year away from now? Are your words going to be what is going to be tonight? Or is it going to be something that is not according and you've been just going back and you've just conformed back to the world? See, the truth is mind renewal is about consistently and consistently doing it every single day. All the time. You want to be beat a habit, put a plant a new habit and do it over and over and over. You want to renew your mind? You, you think, you know what? You think, oh, you know what, brother? I, I don't understand the Bible. Sit down and start reading the Bible over and over until you understand. See, put away every excuse that tells you you cannot renew your mind. Put away every excuse because if the Bible is not true and God is not faithful, He will never tell you that to do that. He would have never told you to do that. If God didn't believe you can do it, He would never have told you. And the truth is that He's given His Holy Spirit to help you with it. You don't need to even do it alone. You know, if, you, if, if, you're, struggling, if you're struggling with healing, take out. Okay? You know what? I know it's easy to say, oh, there's, on the internet, just type all the healing scriptures, you'll get it, everything. But how many of us can say, you know what? I'm going to look it in the Bible. I'm going to turn the pages. I'm going to find out what God says. I'm going to listen to what God says. And I'm going to declare to my body what God says. And I'm going to not just do it one day. I'm not just going to do it two days. I'm going to do it all the time, every time till I live. And I'm going to say it and I'm going to speak to this body. This body is going to obey me because that's the authority I've been given. Renewing your mind is not easy. It takes effort. I remember a time when, when I started out on this journey and I wanted to learn. And this is the best way. You know what I did? I said, you know what? No matter what happens, before I sleep, I'm going to read the Bible. So it, was, it didn't matter if, if it was 10 o'clock, if it didn't matter if it was midnight, or even if it was 2 a.m. in the morning. I wouldn't sleep until I'd read my Bible. And I wasn't doing it just to prove to someone, you know what? I needed to build that habit up so that this life of God was consistent. Because that's the only way you will learn. You know, sometimes when, the, when, when you're on a journey, and in the beginning, this will always seem hard. But once it becomes natural to you, once it becomes second nature to you, then the easy part comes in. If you can start speaking healing scriptures one year from now, every day, if you can speak that, then the second year will be a breeze. Because you won't even need to think about it. It will be so used to it. 
If someone says sickness, automatically out of your mouth, healing just comes out. Because it will be so natural to you. So that's what we need to do. I remember time, you know what? I remember I, I, I used to love music. If you go sometimes, I probably still have the whole, whole 90s music, all of it. Probably on CDs burned somewhere. I remember I burned all my CDs, all, all in MP3s, made the whole folder, had all the names on it, on the old tracks and everything. It's probably somewhere in a cupboard, but I haven't looked at it for so many years. But I remember God told me one time, you know what, if you, if you want to get rid of this, just delete it now. You want to be free from the addiction of the worldly music, just delete it now. Take the hard step. Just do it now. And that's what I did. I just went, select all, delete. What to do next? That's the hard part. Is that if you're not going to fill something back into fill into that hole that has been there and has been your desire, has been there, you know what? Something else will come back. And your thoughts won't be renewed. So what do you do? You put in worship music every time, all the time. You know, I guess so many people tell me, you know what? Oh, you know a lot of new worship music. But that's what, that's what I am. That's who I always love. And that's what I always love to be. That's why you'll find me always with new worship music. It's because that's where I am always. And that's what I've replaced my old life with. That's how I've renewed my mind to start thinking and worshipping God in a manner where I was worshipping music and the world. And it's hard work. It's not easy. But now you ask me to sing the worldly songs, I probably wouldn't know half of it. I would probably even understand what's happening. i probably switch off the radio faster than probably turning the lights on the car. Lights on the, <clears throat> lights on the car. Reading the Bible consistently, like I said. You know, I remember a time when, uh, see, I had this opportunity because I work in an environment where, where I can actually listen to messages all the time because my work is sitting down and on a computer most of the time. So, so I used to hear messages, and I just didn't used to hear just messages. I used to hear them all throughout the day. So if you come to my office, most of the time you'll hear is messages all the time, all the time, all the time. And once I used to go home, what I would do is that I'll just open up a book and i start reading. See, I was so consist consistently putting my mind into the Word of God that all it came out was the Word of God. See, I didn't have to try. In the beginning, it seemed hard. But my body was so used to consuming and finding out more about God that, that most of the things that I'm telling you today, I probably learned 10 years ago. Not 10 years ago, probably 5 or 6 years ago. And that's what God has been teaching me over and over. But I can only do that because there was a time when I had to put myself and say, not this, but this. And that's the hard choice we need to start making. Whether it be finance, whether it be healing, whether, whether it be anything whatsoever, if we are consistently willing to put God's word in our life, Every time to renew our mind, not to fulfill a task, but to renew our mind, all will come out is the word of God. You will not know, but the word of God says, you know what? Even as you behold the word of God in a mirror, you don't know, but you are being changed and transformed into the glory of God. That's what it is. I'll give you an example. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Look at someone who knew and understood to be renewed. It says, yeah, by an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would become his home. When he left, he had no idea where he was going. He had no idea where he was going, but he was just following this voice. He knew that this voice was greater. He knew this voice was my answer. And all I need to do is just follow this voice. Look at next. Look at the next first. Can we get verse 10? Verse 10, verse 11. Abraham did it by keeping his eye on an unseen city with real eternal foundation, the city designed and built by God. The message translation put it, puts it beautifully in that you know how Abraham did it? Because his eyes were consistently on one thing. I'm going to the city which the designer and the maker is God. He was not trying to... Try to make around and think, you know what, I'm going to go and this place looks good. I'm just going to settle here. Or I'm going to go there and I'm going to just settle there because the eyes look good. No, no. I'm looking consistently 
on, on, on what God has built for me, what God has planned for me. I have renewed my mind to say, God, I'm going to follow your plans. God, I don't know if the world's plans are, are good for me or, or if they look good whatsoever, but God, your plan says going this direction, that's all I want to go. Look at Psalms 1. This is one of my favorite Psalms, and I look and, I, I, and I've meditated on this, and I believe God has given a lot out of this. It says, yeah, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That means in order to change your mind, in order to renew your mind, these are the no's. These are the things that you will actually need to cut out. See, if you think that you can renew your mind by still going out and doing these things, you are not going to be able to. See, you, once you start this walking this path and suddenly you don't realize you're standing in the path and after a little while you haven't realized but you've just made your seat in that path. That's what's actually happening. Instead of even trying to walk that path, cross over. Find the other path that God has set for you. Find the place where, you know where? See, most people, most Christians want to live like this. This is the fence of sin. They want to live just here. Just next to the fence and say, you know what, I'm safe. I'm on the fire side of this of the fence. Why don't you walk to the other side where the glory of God is more prevalent? Where the glory of God and the goodness of God is so more prevalent than just sitting on the fence and standing there. Because you don't know when you'll fall over the other side. Why you want to risk falling over the other side? Why you want to walk the fence and you know what you say? Oh, you know what? But, but, this, but I'm just going to these people. Oh, I'm just going to sit down with them for a little while. And I'm going to be good. You know what? I've got control. Why, why, why you want to tempt? He says, you know what? How temptation comes when you run away from the hand of God. When you are away from the hand of God, that's when temptation strikes. It's not when you're in the hand of God. It's not when you're close to God. If you are consistently in God's presence, how can temptation come? If your eyes, your ears are just consistently consuming the word of God, how can temptation come? It doesn't. It's only when we are drawn away from the presence of God, then we are tempted. So let's, let's, let's not try to live a life on the fence. Let's actually renew our minds and not just be renewed to just enter the gate, but actually live the life of dominion, live the life of authority. Say, you know what, I'm not just going to look at the fence. I'm going running away the other far, running away the other side as far as I can go. Because that's where I want to be with God, without the fear of, of falling over, without this, this idea of it going away. And how do I do that? Look at the next one. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, day and night, day and night. Renewal happens day and night. If you want to change your mind, day and night. What are you putting? Day and night. Not what you're putting one week. It's not going to happen because you put something once a week. It's not going to happen because you put it once, once every month. No, no, I'm going to remember because I'm going to put that same information of God's word day and night, day and night. This is where I'm going to be day and night. I'm going to be found in the word of God day and night. I'm going to renew my mind day and night. If, I, if I'm struggling in any area, I'm going to look into it and I'm going to see what God says about it day and night, day and night. If I, if I can't understand finances, I'm going to look what God says about finances day and night, day and and night this is how we renew is day and night we're going to get up a video there and after that I've got something to close with so this video will help you and highlight you of all the things we've talked about dominion over the whole year you got that? let's look at this Nothing can overcome me. I am above, not beneath. That is exactly what I want to tell you, is that your thoughts are running your life. Whether you like it or not, your dominion life begins in your thoughts. 
When Jesus came, he wasn't telling that you need to have sorrow of what you have done. No, he says that you need to reconsider your thinking. The only reason you'll find it hard to understand word is because you're not in it day and night. The simplest way I can put to how you protect your mindset is to protect what goes through your ears and what goes through your eyes and what comes from your mouth. The darkness as a believer that exists in you is because of the lack of knowledge. God says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's not a lack of your faith. It's not a lack of your passion for God. That the thief comes to steal, then there's something is coming to steal. That means there's something you already have. So when, when, we are give, when we are sticking to a plan, we're sticking about learning about this dominion life, as you are faithful to learn more and more, I expect you to grow in that area. What the devil does is that he will always twist the scripture. As people of God, don't look at things as just everything is just natural. See, that's what we need to do as a church. We need to understand where or how much authority we have. You have been seated and blessed with every glorious gift, everything. You, it's all settled. Choose to dominate life. Your one choice to be dominant over the circumstances can produce a life worth living. But if you want to live a life of dominion, you cannot just base your relationship with God with all your needs. When we talk about pulling down strongholds, God doesn't just expect you to pull down strongholds one night. Casting down arguments and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The devil's mission against you is not your health, not your finances, not, not anything around you. It's always about the word. You and I having an understanding. Having an understanding, having an understanding of what we actually hear. So the second one we talked about is how persecution always, and is written in the word, always comes because of the word's sake. The scripture is, is what we base, what, what, what Christ was coming to do. He set out so that he could give us the right knowledge of God. And the devil wants to destroy that knowledge of God. He wants to come and work against God. He's not coming to work for God. God's kingdom rules over this world's kingdom. So if God is ruling over this world's kingdom, and if we are part of that kingdom, we are supposed to rule over this world's kingdom. Remember the first ground? Satan comes immediately after you here. Okay? So the first problem is hearing. So good ground actually has a way of hearing. Okay? Next one, when we look at the stony crown, it's with gladness, and that is what we're supposed to, how we're supposed to hear the word. We're supposed to accept the word, but we should also have root okay the third one is that it's not just about about all the all the planting it's all about also about looking that you actually bear the fruit dominion without the power does you no good it's like gun without bullets in the church age now in the church age now the lord jesus is showing himself as the spirit now, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you don't know power in Christianity. Faith is believing on the unseen and believing it to be true. Every time you, you are in faith, you are act actually putting your faith in something you cannot see. You're putting your belief in something you cannot see. When we talk about unbelief, the very opposite is true. You are believing only what you can see. The reason he gave man dominion is because his love towards us. If God didn't love us, there was no purpose of giving us the money. So in Him we have been blessed. It's not we're going to be blessed, He has already blessed us. To be blessed, when He said He has already blessed us, that means we should be receiving that blessing. But so many people are struggling to find out that that's the same presence they have with them all the time. So every spiritual blessing in the heaven realm has already been lavished upon us. God's word is not only what he pleases in, God's word is not only what, he, uh, perp uh, what his purposes are, but it says that it will prosper. The devils know there is a God. They show him, they know him. But why aren't they changing their lifestyle? Because they don't, not only do they believe there is a God, they know there is a God, but there is no action to prove it. The just do not have the option to try and think the way everyone else thinks and expect the different results of the kingdom. 
the just shall live by faith if the if the resurrection is not real your your righteousness is not completed did you know that the simon was not there until he took up the position of the messiah of the savior the word christ is not jesus's surname just in case you didn't know it means the anointed one but the god told me you know what the power and the strength you get is in repetition it's about knowing it something over and over and over till it becomes so part of you that when you speak it just comes out so if god is living inside my spirit then god must be giving me strength and energy to do things which i normally cannot do in my human ability jesus here puts down the ultimate idea of authority if i don't do what my father tells if i don't do not just do it if i don't do the works of my father you don't need to believe me a good steward is not one who has so many gifts or talents but rather the one who actually uses the gifts and talents as we nearing the end of the journey it seems like but there's certain things that we need to establish in our hearts in, 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 even in regard to dominion because sometimes the idea of dominion cannot overtake god and this is what i want you to know is that whenever we talk about dominion whenever we talk about anything about god there is a trust in god dominion is not living uh, as if situations dictate your life or situations tell you who you are and where you're going to end up dominion life is you determining your life by what god said about you So that's that's our whole year of how much have we learned about dominion. And if you notice there's so many things that we just repeat over and over and over. So many things we just repeated over and over because that's what we need to do is we need to start doing the things instead of just start speaking about it. We don't just need to start talking about it. we need to start actually doing these things of repetition. You know, I, I we're just about to end. Can you have someone on the keyboard? <clears throat> You know this is how I, this is the best way I can show you and I was learning this and uh, every, any anyone know about rockets and space any have an idea about rockets and space okay a little bit all right so this is what it is the earth the earth's atmosphere if you want to reach the earth's atmosphere it's about it takes about 100 kilometers if i'm not wrong yeah so it's about 100 kilometers get get away from the earth that you see you know the earth you see the atmosphere the ozone layer everything if you want to pass that it's about just about 100 kilometers that's it but to get to the moon is about 290,000 kilometers okay so that's 100 kilometers to get out of the earth's atmosphere and it's about 290,000 kilometers to get to the moon but the greatest problem that rockets faced was what we call escape velocity You know what escape velocity is is the speed at which we need to go to break free from this gravity from this orbital environment of the atmosphere of earth. And you know what the speed they needed to go at? They needed to go at about 40,000 kilometers an hour. That's the speed which which you need to go to break through. In order to achieve that when they made the first rocket And, and when it first went to the moon so it had lots and lots of fuel so they say there was about 900,000 more than 900,000 gallons of fuel so they used up 500,000 gallons of fuel just to get from 0 to 67 kilometers then from there they used up about 340,000 km 340,000 gallons just to get to orbit and in orbit they went around the earth's gravity so they used it they science behind it i won't say it now but but they used the gravity and then they used some more just to get out into the right direction of the moon so in order to complete the rest of the journey they just had about 90,000 gallons to getting from 100 kilometers to 290,000 kilometers but they spent about 
800,000 kilo, 800,000 gallons of fuel of the 900,000 just to get out of this atmosphere. And that's what mind renewal looks like. There is effort to get out of the system, to get out of the world's way. And that's what it would look like. The greatest effort is not reaching your destination. It's actually getting out of the conformity of this world. It's not to be it's not to be said, I'm of this world. It's to be said, I'm not of this world. That I don't think like the world thinks. That I don't, I don't, I don't determine my lifestyle like the world thinks. I don't even go and operate the world things way. But I am actually transformed. And all that takes is the greatest effort to get out and renew your mind. And right now, for some of you, it may seem like that you've put out all the efforts and all we've done is just reached out near to the atmosphere and just dropped back. Because if we don't push through, you'll always come back. If we don't push through out of this orbit, if we don't push through out of this world's atmosphere, we'll always come back. If we do not want to be determined by the gravity pull of this earth, or what we call, if we don't want to be Determining our lives by the traditions of this world, we will need to push away. We can't have our feet on both the, both the ships and say, I'm going to live my life. All you will go and get is a big splash and a big fall. Life in dominion begins with the renewing of the mind. And that is your greatest challenge. See, it's not about guilting you in or something. It's about what do we see ourselves a year from now. Maybe tomorrow we look still the same. Maybe our situations look still the same when we wake up tomorrow. But does our mind still look the same? Does our thinking still look the same? Because if your thinking can change, if you can start thinking differently, you will see that sooner or later, your situations will start changing. Your circumstances cannot overrule you. Your situations and everything about what the world says, you're not longer, no longer bound by it. You, you're not even determining life by the world. You're not consumed by what is around you, but rather your life is consumed by who is in you. Because you know, the greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. This is, this is a poor, I'd say this is a poem. And the poem is, says, by Kate Wilkinson, says, May the mind of Christ, my Savior. And while, while we end, we just, I just want to read it to you. It says here, May the mind of Christ my Savior live in me from day to day by His love and power controlling all I do and say. May the word of God dwell richly in my heart from hour to hour so that all I may see I triumph only through His power. May the peace of God my Father rule my life in everything that I may be calm to comfort sick and the sorrowing. May the love of Jesus fill me as the waters fill the sea. Him exalting, self-abasing, this is victory. May I run the race before me, strong and brave, to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus as I onward I go. May His beauty rest upon me as I seek the lost to win. And may they forget the, sh the channel, seeing only Him. We've learned a lot about dominion. We've learned a lot, a lot about dominion. And the truth is, it will matter nothing if we don't use it. If we don't use it to change our lives. If we don't choose it to say, I'm going to use it to change my life. If we don't make the choice, all this knowledge makes of no use. If we're not making the choice, to actually renew our mind, to follow Jesus, to think like Jesus, to be like Jesus.